In today's episode, Alex and I talk all about macro calculators, how to use them, if you should use them, what the downfalls of them are. So go ahead and share this with a friend if you think that they would find it helpful or useful, but we'll catch you on the inside. Hello and welcome to episode 138. You're here with Physique Development and today we're talking all about calorie calculators and macro calculators. All right, let's go ahead and crack into some more in-depth information. Let's talk about the back end of a calorie calculator. What's even going into to figure out these calories? What is it based on overall? So some things that you're really trying to calculate here is going to be your total daily energy expenditure. That's also going to be seen as TDEE. There are going to be a few different acronyms in this podcast, so bear with me, but the definitions will be in the show notes as well as in the description box on YouTube. There's no single best diet for everyone. That's something that we've talked about at nauseum, but we really want to figure out what works for you. And when we talk about the TDEE or your total daily energy expenditure, that's going to be really in reference to the amount of energy that you are going to burn throughout the day or use throughout the day, as well as taking into consideration what energy you are consuming. So this is often referred to as calories in versus calories out. Calories in versus calories out is a little bit more complex than just thinking about what we do for exercise and then just thinking about the food that we are consuming. But let's go ahead and start with calories in. That is going to be based on the foods that we consume, whether that's going to be our protein, carbs, or fats, calories, all of that is going to be based on our calories in. But calories out, it really makes it that you have to have a more in-depth understanding of the TDEE and what comprises it. So the four things that are going to comprise your TDEE are going to be BMR, which is your basal metabolic rate, as well as your TEF, which is the thermic effect of food. You're also going to take into consideration here your NEAT and then your exercise activity. So NEAT is going to be non-exercise activity, and then the T stands for thermogenesis. But I think we get the point here when we're talking about physical activity as a whole and then breaking into actual exercise activity and then non-exercise activity. All these fancy words and acronyms, they are pretty simple when we really look at it. So for the BMR or your basal metabolic rate, this is just going to be the amount of calories that your body needs to be able to function. So this is often referred to, let's say you're in like a comatose state. So you're not doing anything else but the basic functions to keep you alive. That's going to be your BMR of the amount of calories needed to keep your body running and doing the normal daily activities. When we look at TEF or the thermic effect of food, this is going to be the number of calories the body uses to break down and digest the food that we do eat on a day-to-day basis. And then the last two are ones that are more widely known, but NEAT, so non-exercise activity thermogenesis. And that's going to be the things that you're doing on a day-to-day basis. So walking around, wrestling your kids into clothes, might be cooking throughout the day, even fidgeting or me moving my hands as I'm talking right now is going to be that NEAT. And then when we look at exercise activity, so EA, and sometimes it is put in there as PA, physical activity, is going to be specific physical activity. So going to train or going to do a workout class is going to be included in that. So when we take these four things into account, the BMR and the TEF are relatively fixed. We can move the needle a little bit, but a lot more of that movement is going to come from those last two. So your NEAT and your exercise activity. It's actually been shown that when we look at NEAT, it can take up 6 to 10% of your daily energy expenditure for someone who's sedentary, but it can take up to 50% of someone's calories when it comes to someone who is way more active and out there moving a ton throughout the day. The reason I went over these and wanted to make sure that you understood these definitions is because these four things go into your TDEE, and if we want to change that TDEE, the two main levers we have to pull are going to be the NEAT and then the exercise activity. So especially when it comes to education, that's something we're extremely passionate about here at Physique Development. It's in our tagline to train, educate, and inspire. It is riddled all throughout everything Physique Development to make sure that we are educating 
eating along the way. And with a calorie calculator or a macro calculator, it can be something where people are just going to plug in their stats and then see that number and go on with it, where we really want to make sure that we're doing due diligence to explain what's happening. Hopefully, you're able to take this video, and this is going to allow you to get way better results with using the macro calculator because you're going to have a better understanding of all of the things going into the equation and then all of the things that you can personally change when it comes to being able to see what ranges things are at because that's what we're going to talk about here next is some of the things that come up with a calorie calculator that are common mistakes or things that we see oftentimes of people just entering in those numbers and grabbing that that number of, okay, this is the amount of calories that I should eat now. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the floor to Alex to talk about some of the common mistakes he sees with people using macro calculators. The first one is going to be exactly what you just said, <laughs> is taking it at face value and, and only utilizing it as the, the singular tool. Because when we look at the the free resources that we're providing, the the nutrition calculator is free. These are going to be things that we use in conjunction with other tools to find what is best for the person. Um, because in a perfect world, every person has the financial ability, um, the bandwidth and those different things to sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching, to be able to have that nutritional guidance that is very, very specific and individualized to them. But the reality is, is that not everyone has the ability financially or just the ability within their time to have one-on-one -on -one coaching. And so this is a tool in which they can utilize in the meantime to have some direction, but this is not going to be the end-all be-all of how you're going to lose body fat or how you're going to gain muscle, but it is going to be in the right direction. So are you saying that people should use that more as a guideline? Certainly. I think that it is much more of a guideline and used in conjunction with where you're currently at. And so if, if I was to have someone come to me and wanting to utilize a uh, nutrition calculator, I would encourage them to track their food for seven to 14 days and have them get a uh, average of their caloric intake over that time frame. And then they would take what they get from the nutrition calculator and compare and contrast how close is your current intake to that of the nutrition calculator? And if it's, let's say that you're wanting to lose body fat and that is whatever that number may be, and then you see where your current intake is at, how much of a discrepancy are we between those two numbers? Are you under that intake? Well, then you don't need to be going into a dieting <laughs> phase. You need to be going into a time where you're reverse dieting from that very low intake and get to a better maintenance intake of what maybe is recommended to you through that nutrition calculator calculator. If you are above that caloric intake, but it's a big drop for you. And what I mean by big drop would be anywhere between four and 600 calories right off the top. If it's a four to 600 uh, calorie discrepancy, what I would encourage you to do is take 100 to 200 calories and track your food for another two weeks and see what happens within your body composition and work your way to what that nutrition calculator is encouraging you or recommending that you are needing for that calorie deficit, for example. Because if you were to make the jump of 400 to 600 calories of a decrease from where you're currently at, and oftentimes when individuals are eating better, they're going to be more active as well. So then the calorie deficit itself is going to even be greater because you're doing more activity, you're hitting your steps better, your resistance training more uh, frequently. And so then that deficit is even larger and that's going to cause you to um, just it, like your adherence is going to be very challenged. You're going to have uh, poor energy. You're going to have poor recovery from your, your training and those different things. And so being in a place where you're using it as a tool and not an end-all be-all is extremely important when it comes to nutrition calculators as a whole. Yeah, I love that you talk so much about really being able to use it, collect data, and then make the next decision. And one thing for anyone listening or watching this, if you're interested in using a calorie calculator and you really want to see how to use it in a dieting phase and how to make sure that you're paying attention to the right biofeedback, I would highly, highly recommend you check out our Leaner Together series. That is a 12-week dieting series that Alex and I did. And 
and we went through step by step. You get to see inside of my check-ins of Alex sending me my response, talking about what he sees, why he's making changes, why he's not making changes, and why he's making different deficits in place and how he's making those deficits because you can make it with food, you can do it with cardio, you can do it all different types of ways. So I think that is an incredible resource to be able to use to really see it in action of, okay, how do I apply this? What things do I pay attention to outside of just my calorie intake? And then also that consistency point that you said of really sticking to it, maybe making a change, sticking to it again. Because if you don't have data to go from, then you're not really able to make an educated decision. You're just guessing or going off of emotion. Right. And I think that with nutrition calculators, they've had some time here with a really bad rap um, for good reason to a, to a degree for the sheer fact of individuals taking it at face value and it being excessively too low of caloric intake or excessively too high. You think of someone who is um, greatly overweight and needing to lose a considerable amount of body fat, the nutrition calculator is, is working off of values and, and utilizing the the numbers that are being input to create the the intake that it's recommending. And so if someone has a considerable amount of body fat to lose, then they may get a very high marker of protein consumption. And that's really been the, the knock on nutrition calculators. And at that point, you're going to have to have, if you're someone who is not in the, the norm range, whatever that, you know, kind of would be, and you find yourself as more of an outlier, it makes sense that the nutrition calculator that is based off of generalizations is going to be a little skewed to you as an outlier to the general population, if you will. And so if you find yourself there, take what is being shown with uh, the nutrition calculator with a grain of salt. And I think that there are a lot of individuals in the space that are very willing to help in that scenario. If someone is to send me a DM, um, and ask a question of that nature of like, I use the nutrition calculator and this is where the protein is at. It seems kind of high. I've tried to hit it, but I'm struggling to get to that allotment. I have answered that question in my DMs <laughs> uh, probably a hundred plus times. Yeah. And I appreciate the question because the person is putting in the work to do things on their own. They're using the free resources that we're providing to get themselves to a better understanding of their nutrition. And I appreciate that. The person who I cannot help in my DMs is like, give me coaching for free. Do all these things for free. It's like, I we give so much for free. I, I literally cannot give more than what I already do for free. And so take care of those or you know, utilize those tools, but ask questions throughout that process and reach out to people that you trust um, to get recommendations and, and get a, a greater understanding and knowledge on these different things. So um, I would encourage that. I, I love that because I, I am so passionate about the same things here and just that when it comes to the information and especially if it is going out to a large crowd, it is generalized. And when we're talking about a calculator, when you only have to insert five things about yourself, how personalized can it be? It can't know about your stress levels, your sleep quality, all these different things going on. And within those five factors, it's taking, and that's why for people that are a higher weight, that uh, nutrition calculators can give out numbers that might not be correct is because it's really taking your BMI into consideration as well. It's looking at your height and your weight, which means it's not taking into consideration how much muscle or how little muscle is actually on your body. And it's also not taking into consideration your dieting history, your habits, your hormonal health, if you're breastfeeding or not. Some of them aren't taking that into consideration. And so as the consumer, you either have to be an educated consumer to understand why some of these might change, or it's be you are just going to follow these numbers blindly and think these don't work for me, either macros don't work for me, or eating healthy doesn't work for me, or I'm just going to be stuck at this. And I think really being able to take it upon yourself of what are the factors that are associated with this? What can I understand about this so I can utilize this free resource, which is super great. I even remember before calorie uh, calculators were super popular, of I was doing the equations myself by hand of finding them online and then trying to figure out what my, my macro should be or what I should be eating. Uh, so I, I think that when it comes to it, there's a lot of areas 
there with self-reporting and then just not understanding how to utilize it. And so being able to have this as a resource alongside the calculator makes me feel really, really great on that. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Now, you talked about who this is for, who it's going to be good for. When somebody is going in there, let's say they've taken these things into consideration that we've talked about, um, but maybe they've never tracked before or they haven't tracked consistently for a period of time. Since they can go in there and figure out what a deficit is, should they go to just those deficit calories right off the bat because they're trying to lose weight? Or how should someone utilize it in that way? I would say that getting right into the deficit would not be their case whatsoever. I think that if someone is um, tracking nutrition for the first time, this is going to be a a large learning curve. If you're not having someone walk you through this process and be a part of this process and guiding you, there's going to be a lot of bumps in the road. Um, you're just going to, you're going to make errors. You're going to um, think that something's one way and, and it's actually another. And there's just going to be uh, hurdles that you're having to overcome. And so for a person who's really going through it for the first time, I would and, and financially is in a place that they can do it, hiring someone to really teach in that moment is going to expedite the process so much. Because I, I know that for myself, when I started tracking macros, I was able to have guidance and it was a huge bump for me to like have that and not have to make as many mistakes. I still made plenty of mistakes as we've talked about on this podcast <laughs> a number of times. I've mistracked many things that I thought were <laughs> much less fat and they were significantly Zero more. Fat. Yeah. <laughs> And so for the person who's tracking for the first time, I think it's a, a good experience for you to just try and eat at your caloric maintenance because more often than not, individuals on a regular basis are under consuming calories and then having a hypercaloric intake a couple days a week type situation to where their average of intake is above and in a surplus, but on a, a more consistent basis, they're under consuming because they don't know what to eat. They don't know when to eat type situation. And then they're shoveling food down their mouth uh, at the end of the day because they're ravenous and, and again, don't know what to eat. Mm. So that being the case, eating at a caloric maintenance and allowing for yourself to learn. This is a, the process for you to learn more about foods and to um, be able to use my fitness pal or whatever the tracking app is that you're utilizing to better understand what the quantity of food looks like, what makes up this food from a macronutrient standpoint, total calorie intake perspective, and use this as a, a time to learn relative to like, oh, the scale's not going down, I need to eat less food. Uh, and by having less food in your diet, you're having less repetitions of learning more about different foods and the variety of foods that mm -hmm. you can consume. And so by having maintenance in place, it gives us, I guess a surplus would be better in terms of the <laughs> quantity of food, but with us focusing on body composition, I would say that maintenance is a better option. And I, I think that many individuals don't want to be at maintenance because in their mind, it's like, I'm going to stay the same. Mm -hmm. When in reality, eating at maintenance, you're probably going to see yourself lose body fat and improve in your energy levels. You're going to see sleep improve. You're going to see probably your skin improve and your ability to navigate um, situations. Like if you're someone who's very irritable, if you were to eat at maintenance for a period of time, you're probably going to see your irritability decrease. Yes. <laughs> because now your body is more nourished and you can, and your brain's functioning better, your body's functioning better. <laughs> and so by eating at maintenance, your body composition is going to improve for the sheer fact of you're just functioning at a higher rate. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel more like going in and going on that extra walk. You're going to feel more like um, going to the gym and um, just being in a better mood as a whole. Um, the, the, the individuals who are listening who have been in a, a chronic dieting state, I'm sure you're very irritable and you don't really enjoy going to the gym and you probably are too tired to go and go on that extra walk that you just need an extra two or 3,000 steps. And so by move, making that move to maintenance, it will be a, a big help to your understanding of nutrition as well as just your overall experience to improving your body composition. I mean, preach, retweet, all of the above. Just I... 
I'm on the same page there. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. Now, another thing we talk about is the activity level on a day-to-day basis. And like I said, self-reporting, sometimes people are not reporting correctly. And I think that understanding what it means to be a sedentary person or to be someone who's a very active person is helpful to know. So I used to fall into this of I wasn't tracking steps necessarily, and I had a desk job. I still do, but I had a desk job and was training four times a week. So I thought, I'm probably a pretty active person. I mean, I'm exercising, I'm doing my thing. And I would plug things into calorie counters and I would realize, oh, I eating at this amount, I'm not seeing the results I want. And it was because I was thinking that I was a lot more active just because I was like, oh, I'm not just sitting around all day. So I think that being able to accurately report and even on the opposite end, and we run into this with a lot of nurses or if someone is like an in-person teacher uh, for uh, fitness classes, that they have 15, 17, 20,000 steps in a day. And then they put themselves in a place where they're eating like 1,200, 1,300, 1500 calories. And it's like using having that many steps and that much activity, you're going to need some more food than that and being able to recognize what level of activity that you do have. I will use my my mom as a reference. I don't know if she'll love me using her as a reference here. But uh, when we talk about just improving overall well-being and and looking at NEAT. This is something that I have implemented with her as of late, and, and she has lost a good bit of, of body fat and total body mass in just making this one change is that we were looking at nutrition and wanting to make better choices, but we weren't tracking macros. It was just a matter of like, you are aware of some of the poor choices that you make nutritionally, whether you have a vast knowledge of nutrition or very little. There are things that you have within your diet that's like, I know that I'm being a little bit of an asshole here and I can remove those things and I can make substitutions and so on and so forth. So we made those adjustments, but we really just looked at her steps and her steps were about, I think 1500 to maybe 3000 on a day-to-day basis because she has a little bit of activity, but mostly is sedentary throughout the day. And we just moved her steps up to 7,000 steps per day, which really was a a shift of her having like two 20-minute walks added to her day-to-day for her to be able to do that, which was helpful for her as well as my parents' dog that was able Mm -hmm. to get some movement in as well. And she was able to make very great strides within her body composition by making that one shift of just being more active. She didn't have to get to the gym. It was just that one lever that we pulled and looking at all of these as singular levers that you need to pull at different times to get into a place where you're able to get to the place that you want to be physically. Because too often, individuals will take all of these levers and be like, I'm yanking on all of these. (laughs) I'm going into a calorie deficit. I'm tracking my steps and I'm doing 10,000 at minimum. And then I'm resistance training six days a week. And it's like, I feel terrible. It's like, yeah, you should. (laughs) Honestly, (laughs) Honestly, you should because of the amount of activity that's in place and the lack of nourishment you're giving yourself. And so by taking these steps individually, whether that be your nutrition, whether that be your need or that be getting into the gym, take them individually, feel strong and and like you have a good habit um, in place and then move to the next one. And I I think that that's the best progression that you can have if you're trying to make the steps to a healthier lifestyle for yourself. And if you were to come to a coach like Sue or I or anyone on the physique development team, by doing these things individually and getting these habits in place prior to coming to us, not saying that it is a requirement to do so, but it will allow for your experience in terms of learning from us throughout that process to be even greater because you've got the base of habits in place to be able to expand and really understand even more about yourself individually relative to doing the basics from a habit standpoint that we've already provided for you within all the free resources that are here. I know it's also so tempting of you hear these things of, oh, maybe I should do fasted uh, cardio or I should do HIT or there's this new thing that's going to get me the results that I want. And everything that we're talking about here seems really basic and boring, but the basic stuff works. Like doing the boring work 
works of you are just checking boxes on a day-to-day basis. And if you're thinking, oh, I need to be taking this supplement because people were talking about it and it's all over TikTok, it's like, are you getting your water in on a day-to-day basis? Are you getting movement in on a day-to-day basis? There are very simple things, not easy, but simple things that you can do on a day-to-day basis to get yourself in that better spot. Um, And I think even paying attention to how your life has changed, where in the past, I remember going into a diet, um, your most recent diet, you were like, why can't I diet on higher calories? I used to be able to diet on so much higher calories. And that's, again, taking into account what your daily activity was, where you used to in college be so active of you were literally moving like inflatables and you were doing crazy stuff um, versus, again, now of or a few months ago, you were very sedentary. And so that's obviously going to spend a little bit more than yeah, a few months. Yeah, more than a few point. months. But I realized it after I said a few months. Yeah. So that was not shade on you. That was me not wanting to stop <laughs> and uh, correct myself again. But let's say a few years ago of a lot more sedentary, that makes a lot more sense, yeah. um, where dieting was a very different experience. So I think that being able to, again, take your your baseline, your circumstances into consideration is only going to help you see better results instead of just trying to do what someone else is doing or trying to do what a calculator tells you to do. It's looking at it, using it for guidance, and then taking that next step forward. Right. And I I think that the other point is the instant gratification that you think you're going to get from making these changes is important to understand that this is much more of a journey than you want to believe it to be. Um, You've gotten to the place within your body because of daily activities that have compounded day after day, month after month, year after year. And so by making a change for one day, seven days, one month, and thinking that you're going to completely flip the script for yourself is naive. And so in that case, understand that you are collecting data on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month basis, and it is consistently a journey. And so you're going to make mistakes and that's okay. And you need to be able to take that data and say, what needs to change to put me into a better position? What resource do I need to seek out to better understand these different topics? Um, And do I even care to know the intricacies of these things? Because I'm sure that many of you don't care to know the intricacies (laughs) and would rather have someone do those things for you. I have spent the last decade plus of my life being very, very invested to be able to apply and help every demographic of individual that I possibly can. And so it is something that I'm painfully passionate about. And you may not have that same passion and that's okay. You don't need to. That's what I'm here for. (laughs) And people like myself are here for. And so I think that that's the, the thing that you always have to keep in mind is that it's easy to get down on yourself for after you make these changes of like, man, I've been, I've been trying really hard for a month and I've just seen a little bit of progress in the grand scheme of what you think you should have seen. But in reality, you've probably made great progress, but you want more as we all do. We always want more of the thing. And especially when we're wanting to make large strides in our body composition, um, we want it to happen abnormally fast. (laughs) And so understand that it's just going to take time. Yes. So you can use our calorie calculator, which we do have, and it's also inside of our app. So if you are also wanting something free when it comes to our app, we do have a seven-day free trial. But otherwise, you can sign up for a monthly subscription of training programs. So if you also don't want to have to worry about your training, then you can go ahead and utilize our app. It has the videos, has everything laid out, a ton of cool features. If you want to know more about the app, then shoot me a message and I will fill you in. I will probably probably talk your ear off all about the app. So go check that out. That'll be linked in the description. And if you have other questions about calorie calculators or what we talked about today, then shoot us a message as well. But I'll have the Leaner Together series linked down below, and I'm excited for you guys to utilize these resources uh, for your own kick-ass results. So thank you guys so much for joining us today on the Physique Development Podcast, and we'll catch you in the next one.